right, hi, welcome to another episode of the Marketing Informer. Now, I have with me a very special guest today, and you're going to hear me say that a lot on these episodes, so get used to it. Um, once again, for those who are just joining us, I am Matt Delman. I am the Director of Marketing here at TechStrong Group, and this is the Marketing Informer. With me today is Mark Hinkle, the founder and CEO of Parapetti Labs. I probably said that incorrectly, um, but Mark... Before we get started, um, give us a brief introduction and of you. Who are you? What do you do? How did you get here, essentially? Okay. Well, I am a masochistic recovering tech executive who just got done um, as a CEO of a venture-backed cloud-native integration platform called Trigger Mesh. And today... I am the CEO of a digital consultancy called Peripety Labs. Uh, a Peripety is a uh, reversal of fortune in a play or uh, theatrical work, typically. So, I uh, not that my fortunes were bad, but I wanted to change directions, and I got really excited about AI. I've always been a marketer and a um, developer relations lead at public companies, private companies, venture back companies, et cetera. And I feel like this artificial intelligence really brings a new aspect to marketing that's going to catapult things forward. Awesome. So, so you recently released the book, um, Marketing Machines, how to okay. harness artificial intelligence for improved efficiency and better storytelling. Um, what drove what drove that book? What drove your interest in AI machine learning for marketing? Sure. So um, I am a big learner in my old age. In my younger years, I was a terrible student. But when I'm interested in something, I really sink my teeth into it. So I, you know, ChatGPT became such a big topic in the last six months. Um, and I was very, very interested in the technology. So I started learning. And as I learned, I was learning, I started to jot down notes. And one of the things that I felt very strongly about is how can I help other people with their marketing if I can't market myself? So I decided to create what marketers usually call as a lead magnet, which was going to be eight pages of, you know, this is where things are going. 160 some pages later, I had a book. And so I decided to uh, publish it uh, for free. I'm an open source advocate. I've worked in a lot of open source technologies with Kubernetes and and other, you know, cloud technologies that that are foundational for cloud computing. And so I released the book and uh, things got a little wild. It was last week's one of the product hunt products of the day. Today, uh, someone who's an influencer in artificial intelligence on LinkedIn shared it. And I've got hundreds of signups coming in since I woke up this morning. Um, but uh, the background was really, I think we saw people entering text into Jack GPT and getting out something that was remarkably close to what a human being would provide. But if you didn't look closely, there were, it looked great, but you really needed to be able to engineer the results and not just chat GBT, but a lot of AI uh, image generation from uh, uh, OpenAI's Dolly or Midjourney and things like that. So I wanted to take the tasks that a normal marketer would do, drip campaigns, uh, social media posts, follow up from trade shows, and codify that into ways that you could automate uh, time consuming tasks that needed to be done, but do so better than I could do it if I, you know, ground out the 50 emails from a trade show or um, summarize the posts that I agonized over for an hour rather than getting a uh, head start from the AI of my choice. So that's that's what I put into marketing machines. It was originally going to be called 
artificially intelligent marketing. Um, I have a sub stack and a um, podcast called Artificially Intelligent uh, Mark, uh, Enterprise, but there's already a podcast of the same name. So um, I haven't rationalized that. That's my one marketing misstep is my branding is not consistent. I have a company called Peripity Labs, which is a little hard to say. I have a book called Marketing Machines, which is catchy, but doesn't reflect the company. And then I have a sub stack and podcast that have different names. So I'm trying to rationalize all that. Um, so don't do as I do, do as I say, I guess would be my advice to people. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And that's something that marketers tend to struggle with a lot as they iterate and launch. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I see a lot on LinkedIn is like all of those, um, the people saying, oh, everyone's using ChatGPT, but they're all kind of using it wrong. And like this constant thread of like the best prompts to get to get to your actual job um what are you thinking about that is that really kind of the the point of where marketers tend to fall down is like they're asking the wrong things or i think prompt in general and the term the the new hot job title is prompt engineers so and the the task is prompt engineering. I think that there is very, there's a very big similarity between the way programmers program code and people should be or will be interacting with um, artificial intelligence. I just think that the, the difference is that we're using natural language rather than structured language like Python or Java or Go or something like that. So it's not necessarily that people are doing it wrong, but just like uh, code, there's a lot of difference between 10 lines of code that does the same thing as 100 lines of code. I think the same thing comes from prompting you. A lot of people have to iterate on their prompts rather than getting the uh, result that they want on their first go round. And that's a combination of understanding how to uh, construct the interaction and to feed it enough information to get a good result. So the old, there's an old IBM programming adage, uh, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, same thing works for, you know, artificial intelligence. If you don't put a clearly defined prompt in, you're going to get probably something that you didn't intend. Yeah. It's almost like, um, when I was in high school in the early 2000s, you know, we were being taught like Boolean logic for Google search. Right. Is that kind of similarly, we need to start like educating people in like that sort of vein for how to use these new AI generation tools? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a syntax that works for, you know, I was, I write my blog headers using or create the images using uh, mid journey, which is a text to image generation, but rather than if then greater than there are different ways that you construct the prompt and provide weights to, you know, if I want a picture of a recovering tech CEO in a office with pictures behind him in a red rocket, I want to make sure that they're equally weighted or else I might just get, uh, you know, the next tech CEO in a hospital bed and the rocket is in the background in the window. So you, you really have to understand the expectations of the AI. I think that over time, there will be more of a, a the models will get trained based on input and they will evolve to provide, you know, outputs that are closer to natural language. But today it's sort of this weird Frankenstein of communication between our natural language, whether it's English for you and I, or, you know, French for people in France, et cetera. And then sort of these parameters that, that are, um, you know, chat GPT is the most, um, is the best at just nat natural language processing. And part of it's because in two months they had a hundred million users who thought that they were getting stuff out, but they were also helping to train the model. 
And now ChatGPT has put on some guardrails if you didn't want your 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 data to be used for training, et cetera. But um, it's it's a that's that's sort of the poster child for how fast AI evolves, and that's why um, people like Elon Musk and others are saying, "Hey, pump the brakes. Maybe we should have a moratorium because you know it's getting better, but is it getting better? As is it safe? So that's that's." Um, my take on prompts and and what people are trying to do that actually kind of leads into an interesting question about the ethics of ai and the um the biases inherent in some of this machine learn in some of the machine learning mm -hmm. algorithms um now that's kind of this well-known thing among ai and machine learning even in data science mm -hmm. you know like your algorithm is only as good as your training data so right. For when marketers are using these AI tools, like what are the sort of ethics that they need to be concerned about, or maybe like top hit ethics? Because obviously, this hoping this is an entire other topic of a different yeah. podcast. But I mean, I think that the first is um, you should you should probably disclose if you've used AI. I mean, pretty much everything that I use and produce has some aspect of AI, and I'm pretty clear about that, but also the ability, you really have to become more of an editor and more of a fact checker than a writer, I think with it. So eventually you'll, it'll be less and less important, but today I think that's really important. Um, the other thing is you got to consider that the source of the training data. So ChatGPT um, hasn't disclosed all the ways that they got training data, but they, let's just say it's probably a representative sample of information on the internet. And we know that everybody on the internet has an opinion and, you know, half of us are right and half of us are wrong. And you've got to take that into consideration. But I think, think in the long term, what will happen is that marketers will have their own repositories and sources of truth. So I think the idea of models, large language models like ChatGPT, will also be customizable models like um, Hugging Face is a is a company that distributes, you know, these mod these natural language processing and other models that that allow you to train it in your brand voice, train it with your own data. Um, I think that will help with marketers in the long term. In the short term, I'm, I mean, I use something called AutoGPT, which is a um, iterative, um, in uh, autonomous intelligent, uh, art autonomous artificial intelligent agent. And what it does is it basically strings together prompts. And I've connected that to a vector database, which is sort of persistent memory. And over time, that that database. Um, gets built up um, with with information that's relevant to me, so then I feel a little bit better. But today is sort of like the Wild West. You know, we're all out there on the plains, you know, trying to figure out where the best place to settle is. And I think that that we're slowly moving farther and farther west, and eventually we'll settle and get, you know, technologies and understanding and. Um, identify vendors that have appropriate guardrails for this kind of thing, and it, it'll be fine. But for now, free fact check, and don't assume that these things that are coming out of this black box of an artificial intelligence are 100% correct, um, especially if it's after like ChatGPT has only been trained on data through 2021, so, or 20, yeah, I think 2021, September. So, um, if you ask ChatGPT today, uh, tell me about Silicon Valley Bank. I'm assuming I'm pretty sure it still says Silicon Valley Bank is a, a is a valid growing concern versus the meltdown it had um, in the last month or two. So that's 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 the kind of thing where it's not quite as as uh, that would be my caution is if you want up to date information, there's some interesting things going on with Bing, uh, Microsoft Chat. Um, chatbot uh, search engine combo because it can be informed by searches and you know some of the plugins with chat GPT if you have plugin access will allow you to get browsing information that's current to inform the model but until then 
check, double check, triple check, and um, be sure of the facts. Yeah. And like the whole thing of um, the running joke of just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> so <laughs> I wrote a blog post today where um, I was going to use a quote from what, who I thought was Charles Darwin, and it's actually been a misappropriated quote for almost 70 years that says it's from the origin of species. And what I did was attribute the quote to a mistyped quote from a presentation in 1963 because, but it's been on the internet. And if you did a search for, you know, evolution or evolve or die, you would find this quote all over the place. And it's not, there's no evidence that he ever said that. Yeah, that's, um, there's a few different quotes like that, like the, um, the one I started off in journalism. So Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens is a personal hero. Yeah, Uh, the whole thing, if I had a different, if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. He didn't actually say that Blaise Pascal said that. (laughs) It's just always attributed to Mark Twain. Yeah, he, uh, uh, they attribute uh, lies, damn lies and statistics. Mm -hmm. to Twain, and it was actually Benjamin Disraeli, the Prime Minister of the UK, who said it, and Twain repeated it, I guess, somewhere, but it was not his quote, but do some searches, you'll find find that that quote everywhere. Yeah, do some searches, do your research. Um, So, we mentioned a few different things, like drip campaigns, social media posts, where should marketers realistically in the future be looking to apply ai tools in like the most direct way is that going to be something like it's repetitive tasks that you know you have to do yeah i think that you're going to look you're going to have to look at the thing the way that you spend your time and look at the things where your individual creativity and talents add the most value in the places where they don't and are also very time consuming and so you know, drip campaigns are probably one of those things where I spent a lot of time coming up with the sequences, but really what I needed to do was just get that call to action down and then let, you know, I can let my AI email writer do the, the, you know, heavy lifting. And if I've informed it of what, where to get the white paper, where to download the software, whatever my call to action is, it's actually pretty good. And sometimes it's even more creative, which is a misnomer. The way uh, AI works is really it's doing the probabilities of the next word in a sentence. And these probability, it's a probability engine. It has an algorithm, but to make it seem more human, there is a little bit of randomness. So it may not always pick the highest probability next word. And that's why it gets a little creative, but it does stay in the ballpark so those kind of things uh drip campaigns refreezing content sometimes i know what i want to say but the way i say it is very much a it's boring and i think that that's i mean there's no way around it is it's very much joe Friday, just the facts and i find that um there's a a really good movie with uh, sean connery called finding forrester about a uh a writer, reclusive writer who helps the student in the way he helps the student is he gives him the beginning to get him started and then the student fills in. I feel like that's really the way to use AI as a marketer is, you know, give it the seed and then let it, you know, run with it. And a lot of times you get this really interesting, you know, voice that is your intent, but not nearly as redundant and boring and much quicker. And I would rather edit than write some of the prose, especially for things that are not thought provoking. I'd rather be brief and to the point and salient rather than, you know, literal and flowing and long winded. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, um, like I actually just did a quote post on LinkedIn about the, the quote from Hamlet brevity is the soul of wit which is made hilarious by the character who says it (laughs) Uh, um anyway okay so 
started kind of the trick of the final standard question in this. So if you were not doing what you were doing right now, what it what would be what would you be doing? Like if you weren't if you hadn't done all of this work or like in your like wildest dreams, no other concerns. I think I would be in a little RV camper van with my dog being a travel writer. I really um I have like a little um side project van versus dog you can see up there it's just me dreaming of driving around to see the national parks in the u.s with my dog nice he's on my other shoulder there (laughs) as a very cute dog unfortunately if you are listening to this on the podcast you cannot see a picture of the dog so please check the video um check the video on when you get a chance and you will see the picture behind mark um Mark, thank you so much for spending the time with me today and talking about AI and marketing. Obviously, this is a very critical topic right now. Um, So yeah, I'll share um, links to the marketing machines in the show notes. And Mark, where can listeners, viewers find you if they want to connect and learn more? Sure. I'm on Twitter at Mr. Hinkle. Um, LinkedIn, it's Mark Hinkle. You can find me pretty easily. Um, Peripity Labs and our substack is the AI enterprise.substack.com. Okay. Awesome. Thank you again. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate it.